Welcome back. In the previous lecture, we worked on advanced SIP registration with multiple soft phones. In this lecture, we'll integrate multiple QSIS soft phones with a real SIP proxy using what's called SIP trunking. This is useful for situations where you need to configure more than eight soft phones. It can also be used to talk to a proxy that does not use registration. In this lecture, we'll show how this is done using CUCM. A quick review of the basic topology of a typical VoIP deployment is shown here. Everything here stays the same when we're working with multiple soft phones using trunking instead of only one. Here we see a network switch in the middle, a core, a CUCM server, and a laptop which can configure the core or run another soft phone. Keep in mind, the topology here is greatly simplified from an actual enterprise VoIP deployment, but the basic concepts shown should apply to any running CUCM implementation. The biggest difference here is that there is no registration taking place. Without registration, things happen a bit differently with the proxy. In this case, both sides use what is called an options ping to check the status of each other. This is similar to a more standard network ICMP ping, but uses SIP signaling instead. Both sides will respond with an OK message to let the other know that they are ready to make calls. As mentioned before, SIP trunking is useful when you need lots of soft phones in your design. For example, CUCM only supports eight soft phones with an advanced setup, and 20 or 30 soft phones trying to type in credentials would be time consuming as well. Here we have the CUCM side. The setup here is gonna look very simple, but there are some issues that can come up. In CUCM, you would go to device trunk to create a new trunk. First, the basics. This will be a trunk and it needs a name. A couple things we want to note here. The destination address will be the LAN interface of the core you're going to use for the soft phone. The destination port will normally be 5060 and is the same one configured on the core. We use a basic SIP trunk profile here and a standard SIP profile. Last and important, we have the DTMF signaling method. We normally use RFC 2833 on the core and this should match what the core is using. Otherwise, we won't be able to send or receive DTMF. On the core side, many things remain the same, but there are important differences. Here, the username only functions as the phone number. The proxy IP address is where SIP signaling messages will be sent. Register with proxy is not checked, since with a trunk, we're not doing registration. We can still have a backup proxy if one is needed. Since we're not doing registration, how do both sides know that they can place calls? They use what is called options pings. These are not the same as ICMP messages that you might be used to and are SIP signaling messages. Both sides will periodically send out options messages and the other side will reply with a 200 OK. This lets both sides know they are ready for calls. On the previous slide, we saw an example of the options message, and here we see the 200 OK indicating a good status. If the 200 OK does not come back, check connectivity between the core and the CUCM server. Here, we see that the trunk setup failed because we did not see a response to the options message that the core sent. Again, here we need to check connectivity between the core and the CUCM server and make sure all IP addresses and ports are correct. Once we get our configuration right, then at this point you should be able to open the soft phone and see it in OK status again. You should be able to place and receive a call. Also note again that a trunk supports more than eight soft phones, so you could have many soft phones in your design. You can also refer back to the basic CUCM training for reference. Again, nothing changes in the call itself with a trunk. It's just how we perform the setup. That's it. In these workshops, we've covered the basic types of SIP setup with the core.